In 2022, we used more cholera vaccines to respond to outbreaks than any year historically. We, we sent 30 million vaccines to respond to cholera outbreaks around the world. My name is Alison Russell, and I'm the program manager for typhoid and cholera vaccines at the Gavi Alliance. We are in a cholera pandemic. This pandemic actually started in the 70s. Maybe that's surprising to people, but it's the same strain of cholera that's been circulating um, since the 1970s. Cholera has been around for a very long time. Um, it's a bacterial disease. It presents as a, a diarrheal disease. If people primarily drink unsafe water, they can get sick within hours. It, uh, it, it makes you sick very quickly, and um, it can be very dangerous if you're not treated, if you don't have access to rehydration and care immediately when you become sick. It also transmits very easily in the community, and that's why community interventions and safe water are really important for controlling in cholera. So we do have vaccines against cholera. We've had a stockpile since uh, it was created in 2013. Gavi funded this stockpile in 2014. So we've had these cholera vaccines for about 10 years now, uh, able to be used around the world with Gavi's support. And they're pretty simple vaccines. There are some characteristics that we would like to see improved in this vaccine. Unfortunately, the protection is not lifelong. We give it to all adults um, and children, everybody over the age of one in a community, but it only lasts for a few years. So the protection is very good at first. Um, even with one dose, you have a pretty high protection uh, at first. Two doses, you'll have a longer protection, but over three to five years, the protection slowly wanes. And that's why it can't be a vaccine that we use routinely for children as we would other vaccines. So the way we use it is to target a specific area and try to vaccinate as many people as we can in that area. And that also provides some herd protection. So even if not everybody is vaccinated, you have much less cholera transmission and additional people are protected because of that. So the increase that we've seen in cholera cases around the world at the moment is a result of the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, some health services being affected, the backsliding and routine immunization, but it's also a larger trend that we're seeing around the world in terms of population growth, especially urbanization, creating um, you know, a lot of communities in dense urban cities that don't have adequate access to water and sanitation. These systems are not set up for the level um, and the speed of urbanization that's happening and that is a, a breeding ground for cholera. Um, that combined with the amount of travel that people are doing means that it's, it's spreading around the world. It's also taking advantage of climate related disasters. So we've seen drought in Somalia, we've seen flooding in Pakistan, we've seen humanitarian emergencies um, in Syria and cholera takes advantage of these situations to, to spread. To control cholera in the long term, and hopefully we're talking about eliminating cholera, not just controlling it, we need more than just the vaccines. We need uh, strong leadership from countries. We need communities that are engaged and active in fighting these diseases. We also really need investment uh, in wash infrastructure, in water and sanitation. Um, as we said, cholera affects those communities who don't have basic infrastructure, basic health services. So investing in uh, adequate sanitation systems, in improved and safe water, is really critical to the long-term control of cholera. We also need to have better surveillance systems that can detect uh, detect cholera when it's occurring, and that will help us to both plan 
prevention. It will help us to respond quickly.